Hey everybody, World War Guy here today, and today I thought I'd do a collection video on my military bayonets. I haven't done one in a few years, and if you have seen the first one, you may notice that since then I have gotten quite a few bayonets in the collection. So we're going to take a closer look, we're going to look at each one individually, see what country they come from, what rifle they're for, and any interesting details that may appear. With that being said, let's get to it. So the first one here we're not going to spend too much time on because I believe it is a reproduction. But nonetheless, this is just a 16 inch US bayonet. You see some markings. I'm not going to spend too much time on it because again I think it's a reproduction. This one here we have a World War II US bayonet. This one's a 10 inch variant. Bake light grip is cracked there. As you can see it is a 1942 dated one but the interesting thing is this is actually a cut down bayonet. So at one point it was the original 16 inch bayonet, but they cut it down to around 10 inches. Uh, so that's really cool. And the scabbard, you can see there is no longer the green paint. And there is the US flaming bomb on it here. Here we have another M1 grain bayonet. This one I would believe is post war just because there is no date on there. You can see US marked AFH. Blade is in a, well, it's in solid condition, but it does definitely has some rust spots on it. Bake light grips, you have a gash there, but otherwise, it's in good condition. All right, here we have another M1 Grand Bandit. You can see this one is in very rough shape. A lot of pitting and rust on the blade, uh, as well as the, the pommel and the handguard. Bake light grips, although there they are cracked and broken. Now this one was gifted to me by my uh, great uncle or my grandfather's brother. Um, and unfortunately you cannot see the markings anymore on there. But since this, this was given to me by my grandfather's brother uh, in Belgium, it is most likely a relic from Belgium or France, somewhere around that area. Now this one, although it's not a bayonet, I thought it would include it anyways because it is a uh, bladed weapon. It is a US Navy marked K-Bar. So you can see the blade there is in pretty good condition. Maybe it needs a cleaning, but I'm not too worried about it. Pommel and handle is in very good condition. There you can see US Navy Mark II and then K-Bar. Uh, on the sheath, you do have a name inscribed there. It's a little hard to read. And then it looks like maybe a naval insignia was there, but is long gone. And has a Boit 43 dated sheath. Only issue is that this part has been cracked off, but otherwise, it's still in very good condition. All right, now here we have a World War I German bayonet. I forgot the model number on it. Blade is in solid condition, but you do have a little bit of surface rust on there. Uh, it's a little dirty, might need some cleaning, but it is still in good, very good condition. Handles are still in good condition. You have a few scruffs or scruff marks here and there. There's the manufacturer. And this one was a 1916 produced bayonet. This one was also gifted to me by my grandfather's brother. So, pretty great piece. All right, this one is definitely one of my nicer bayonets. As you can see, it's a World War II German Car 98K bayonet. Uh, great condition. You can see the Bakelite handles are in just near perfect condition. Uh, the finish is gone from the metal parts, unfortunately. But what's very cool about this is that it's matching numbers. So you see 9361, 9361 on the blade. So this is a matching set, 1939 produced. And it was made by Elite Diamant. Now you can see the blade is in good condition besides some uh, scuff marks. It does look like this was sharpened at one point, unfortunately. But otherwise, matching numbers, you know, it's a great piece to have. All right, here we have another World War II German Car 98K bayonet. Of course, this one is in worse condition. It's in a near relic condition, I'd say. Blade, you can definitely see some chips in the, in the actual blade. Uh, point has been uh, flattened a little bit and definitely has a lot of rust. 
the screws are unfortunately unable to be unscrewed and the press release works, but it doesn't go all the way back in. There's a serial number and it is a 1944 date. It's a little difficult to see, but it is 1944. The scabbard is actually not a German one, or at least not World War II. Um, as you can see, it is very long compared to the actual blade. So I'm not sure what country this belonged to, but you can see the uh, point or the ball has been knocked off and then just pounded in. So definitely a, a rough condition bayonet. So here we have a World War II Japanese bayonet. Again, in used condition, but otherwise still good. You do have some uh, use on the blade here. Finish is still there besides where it was used at some point, maybe by a, you know, a vet used it to cut his bushes or something. Handles are still in very good condition. Some wood missing there, but it's still very solid. And unfortunately, the press release seems a little stiff and uh, maybe needs some lubrication to it. Now this one is made by Tokyo Hoi Kosh Arsenal. I probably butchered the name. But yeah, nice bayonet. All right, here we have another Japanese bayonet. This one definitely has some uh, grime all over the blade, but still in good condition. No pitting, no rust. The wood is in good condition, besides a few chips here and there. And this one, the press release is just perfect. And this one, and this one is made by Kokura Rigugan Zoisho Arsenal. Again, I butchered that, but uh, that is the arsenal it's from. I'm sure you guys can recognize the markings. All right, here we have a World War II Italian bayonet. This one is for the Carcano M9141. As you can see, this one actually has the original frog on it. It's very aqua, the typical aqua blue color. And then this one, the sheath is actually made of leather with a metal tip at the end there. The blade still has its original finish. It's really in good condition. You can see some faded markings there and they're not very crisp. And that may be hard to see, but this one's a 1941 dated bayonet. All right, here we have a World War II Soviet or Soviet Russian bayonet. This is the uh, common spike bayonet, as you can see on all those Mosin and Nagants. See the serial number there. This one is a press release. Otherwise, pretty simple bayonet. Definitely unique compared to all the other ones we're seeing today. All right, here is what I believe is a Romanian Type 1 AK-47 bayonet. Uh, this one's in rough shape. As you can see, it's missing the handle. It's missing the uh, sort of hand attachment there. So it doesn't, you know, you can't lose it when using it. Otherwise, the blade is in very good condition. No issues there. The handles, the Bakelite grips definitely have taken a beating or plastic grips maybe. And the cool thing with the bayonet here is it actually has a built-in wire cutter. So you just attach the blade here and cut. All right, here we have a Austro-Hungarian bayonet. This one I believe is a World War I manufactured. And you can see it has about five, 10% of the frog left. Handles, you can see there's definitely been some marks there of some sort. Sheath is uh, in pretty rough condition. There's a few dents here and there. The finish looks to be gone and it does have a few pitting spots. The blade otherwise is in very good condition. I'm not sure if they originally had finish on them, but otherwise it's never been sharpened it looks like, no pitting or anything. As you can see the marking on the blade there. And it looks like maybe a unit marking on the sheath here, the scabbard. And the interesting thing with these bayonets is when you have it on the rifle, the sharp side of the blade is actually pointing upwards, not downwards like more common bayonets. All right, here we have a Belgian World War II. It's an M16-35 bayonet. Uh, this one's extremely long, probably the longest bayonet I have in my collection. I don't know if it's focusing there. Otherwise, the bayonet's in very good condition. Blade is very clean. There's really no complaints there. You have a few markings here and there. I have made a video about the bayonet in a bit more detail, so I definitely recommend checking that out.
And then on it, we have a original frog on it. Very good, very good condition besides it being a bit dry. Um, all the parts are still there, even the leather loop. So that's really cool. All right, second to last bayonet. We're almost there, guys. Now this one's actually my newest bayonet. It is the M48 Yugo bayonet for the M48 Yugo Mauser. Finally got one. Now this one is a matching number, so you see 46174. 46174. So that's really great. Although the sheath or the scabbard does have some pitting on there, so it's definitely not in the best condition as well as the handle slash pommel of the bayonet also has pitting. The blade still has its original finish, still has a bunch of Cosmoline, Cosmoline on it, which I do need to clean at some point. As you can see there, the manufacturer marking. And on it does come the original frog as well, which is really cool. Definitely not in the best condition, but it is still serviceable and I don't feel scared to mess with it as I am right now. All right, last bayonet of the video. Now this one I'm still unsure. I've asked a few people, they're not 100% sure of which bayonet this is, uh, but I believe it is a Belgian M24 export bayonet. See, the only markings on there is the serial number 46 or 6228. Otherwise, there's no markings anywhere else. Uh, it is slightly longer than the you know, German Car 98 or the Yugoslav M48 bayonets but it does fit on a eight millimeter Mauser as it fits on my Yugo Mauser. Otherwise still in good condition. It looks like the finish has been taken off at some point, but the blade is in very nice condition. And still pretty cool to have. So that concludes the video guys. I hope you guys enjoyed a bit long, but for those who like bayonets, I hope this was fun to watch. Definitely have more bayonets than I expected as someone who claims they don't really collect bayonets. Obviously, this is a lie. I have way more bayonets than I was expecting. But nonetheless, they're really cool to collect. I love seeing the different variety and the lengths and sizes of them. But with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, drop a like, write a comment, share, and subscribe. But besides that, you guys have a great day.